Welcome back into another edition of the Sideline Scoop, a post-spring game Sideline Scoop with Jeremiah Searles. I'm Jessica Cooney. Well, quick turnaround, but we have a game to watch. You actually have some football to actually be able to analyze. What do you think overall uh, uh, takeaways from the spring game? You know, first of all, it was great to see Husker Nation back out in full force. I think it was like 52,000 people. 54,000. 54,000. I mean, that's incredible. I mean, I mean, the stadium didn't look as full as it usually is because we have 90,000 usually, but 54,000 in a spring game is that'll be up there with attendance throughout the entire country so shout out Husker Nation as always but it was good just to see the guys get back on the field right new names guys that we've seen as staples I mean playing I me mean, Ben Stilley wasn't on the field for the first time since <laughs> Nam. so it's like it's good to see some fresh faces out there and you got to see some wrinkles they didn't do a whole lot on offense which we kind of anticipated but it was good to see some guys step up hey your forehead still looks a little burned I up got there right <laughs> absolutely fried I came home on Saturday my wife's like you are sunburned I was like I haven't seen the sun that long in like months Months. You're the one that was adamant that you were with the offense, so you got the sun side. I was in the shade. I was like, you said I'm sunburned. I said I'm not. Yeah, I mean, I have to go the offensive side. What am I going to go over on the defensive side and start talking crap to them mid-game? That's exactly what I do. Uh, well, you know, you mentioned it. Not much that we got to see out of the offense, but what did you take away specifically from the offense? Yeah, you know, a couple things I took away is uh, Grant's going to be really, really fast. Um, <laughs> that was a really nice to see him hit a corner and go, right? You thought that safety might have had the angle on him. And I'm pretty sure that was Tommy Hill that had the angle on him. And then all of a sudden, he just kind of pulled away. It's like, okay, that's good to see some speed back there. And I know Ramirez fast, but that breakaway kind of second gear and go was good to see out of him. I think Palmer's going to be a really good threat. I know he only had the one catch, but I think that he's going to be a really good receiver stepping up into that. He's still learning, still growing, getting used to the offense. So you saw flashes of him. And then you got to really think we didn't have any of our starting tight ends. Right. Um, and so um, we had the one tight end that had two catches. Oh, remind me of his name. It's eluding me right now. The young cat. He had a couple catches that he looked good. He flashed, right? And that's what you want from the spring game. You want the, the, the young guys to be able to step up and, and really have their moment. And that's where you kind of get some depth coming from some of those young cats. Um, defense, defense, was there any standouts for you? I mean, Garrett Nelson got to the quarterback twice, which I thought was good, right? We need him to really step up. And I got a chance to interview him during the game and he said that was some an emphasis that he really pushed. Which you said, you said going into it. I did. That's a big point of emphasis, right? And, and he knows it. I mean, obviously him and Chins have talked about it. Him and Dawson have talked about it. Like, it has to be a big piece of this defense going forward is generating pressure on the quarterback with just single man rushes. And he talked about how that's he's something he's really worked on throughout the spring. You know, I talked with Brent Qualley, who's been around helping coach some of the old linemen that played O-line with me when I was here. And he was saying that Garrett's kind of taking some steps forward this spring as well. So that's really good news for Husker Nation. It's good news for him. But the bad news was he beat up on our tackles a little bit. And that's <laughs> the thing about spring ball, right? You're like, you're like, man, look at this guy really stand out. And you're like, well, shoot, he's going against our own guy. Yeah, like, yep. It's just such a give and take, you know. But um, offensive line, I'm not going to lie, a little lackluster for me in the first half. Well, three I know starters out, right? Yep, three starters out. And thud tempo's so hard to, like, yeah. run the ball. It's like, dude, they tapped. Jacquez Yant at two yards and they called him down like that's not how this happens right but, you know I did see them running off the ball a little bit better so overall I thought it was a good showing um obviously we didn't see a whole lot but I thought it was a really good showing by the whole team yeah how about Omar Manning when I talked to him he said the scoring system's not fair yeah, he goes the only way they should score is if they score I was like that's not like you get maybe one of those a year yeah. if you're lucky too so I thought it was actually a pretty fair scoring system once once you let them go live, yeah. right? the thud tempo was kind of really rigged towards the defense. But once you turned it loose and got to go live, I actually think the scoring system was pretty fair. Yeah. Back to Garrett Nelson, though, because I thought JoJo told you something that was, was uh, really fascinating when he was talking about his growth and just how um, really the big jump. Because you said who to watch out for, and you said, and he said Garrett Nelson, even though it's a name that we all know, that he made such a huge jump a year ago that he expects him to be one of those dominant forces for this football team. Yeah, I mean, I think sometimes we forget Garrett was such a young player when he started playing, right? Sometimes he was a sophomore on the roster a year ago. Right. He was only, he's such a young guy and he was, con he contributed and was productive. But in order to kind of take that next step and become an impact player, right? Not just a contributor, but an impact player, a guy that. When you're game planning against them, the Purdue's, the Michigans have to put a star around number 44 and say, hey, that guy is someone we can't let wreck the game. And uh, he can jump into that role. He's still kind of learning how to get into that role. But not only th off the field, I think on the field is where, uh, excuse me, not just on the field, but off the field, that becomes a big piece of it too. And no one says a bad thing about Garrett Nelson. Mm -hmm. His leadership skills, his work ethic, 
all that off the field is stellar. So if he can then put that on the field too and go bring all those work habits and then turn into that impact player, he can be an absolute force to be reckoned with in the Big Ten. We'll be shocked if he's not a team captain this year. Uh, I think he already is. I mean, <laughs> Just, whether it's by coaches or by team, I can't imagine a guy like that that embodies what it means to be a Husker won't have a C on his jersey come September. What does that, I mean, when you got a guy that has to have two people trying to get him to not wreck so much havoc, I mean, that, that would be huge for this team, right? I mean, look at Aiden Hutchinson. And look at George Karloftis. Look at Obey Mafi from Minnesota, right? Like those were impact players where you have to game plan around those guys. The last true edge rush impact player I think we've had was Randy Gregory back mm. in 2015, right? Yeah. Or maybe even 14. A true guy that could take over a football game on the defensive side of the ball. We need that. And I think a lot of times people think that you have to go get those guys and they come in and they're immediate impact players, right? You can groom those guys and build those impact players. I think Garrett Nelson's a perfect example of that kid that came in super raw, just hungry to learn, hungry to get better. And you've just seen him grow into that role and the next big step of that role is becoming an eight nine sack a year guy tfls right like being a disruptive force and then as you have those guys that grow into that more people fall in line behind that guy because they see the blueprint of what worked and how it happened and then you get more people that start following that blueprint so that you can start building those impact players not necessarily just going and signing top five recruits every year it's also about learning the flow of the game too i've talked to a lot of guys that hey going to get the quarterback they got a knack for that but you gotta you can't just you know leave your guys high and dry you gotta know the defense what the calls are and make your moves when you need to and Garrett has talked about that for a long time it was just you know I mean he was just he was, balls a, blind, to he the was wall, a blind dog like, in a meat house he was yeah. a blind dog in a meat house you just run around and just hit things yeah right? so he's learning the flow of the game which is also so important to to that as well yeah and knowing your assignment knowing hey where's my leverage right do I have outside leverage do I have inside leverage if I make an inside move here am I leaving the corner for the quarterback to escape out or if I wrong shoulder this on a on a lead block or a split zone block like am I doing it right it's, it's defense is so much more than just see ball sick like sick ball which sometimes it's fine that's what it is for a lot of those times but if you can understand your assignment and play assignment sound football which is what made that defense last year so great is they didn't have the superstar like we talked about but all 11 guys on the field knew their assignment executed their assignment and played team defense that's when you really start making hay as a team we got in the weeds there a little bit but that's okay people like the weeds I sometimes know. right I, know. I could break down ball at the best of them <laughs> all right uh quarterback so could you take away much from that <laughs> not really I mean I thought Casey Thompson delivered a couple nice balls uh, Logan Smothers ran around pretty well Chubba Purdy had a real nice ball down in the corner of the end zone there in the north end zone and you know I think all of them came out and executed well um, I don't think there was any picks, right? Well, that's good. A couple mesh exchanges, which you never like to see. You never like to see the ball on the ground, especially down in the red zone, right? That's a big problem. So got to clean those things up. But overall, I thought the execution was good. No delay of games. No, like, pre -snap. we had a couple pre-snap procedure penalties, but I think that was a little bit of nerves getting back out there. But overall, I thought the quarterbacks played really well. I think that it is a pretty even playing field right now. Honestly, we don't get to see what goes on out there on the practice field but what they showed I didn't see anyone that stood out or like stood way behind even Henrik Harburg got in there and played pretty well mm -hmm. um, what about uh, the defensive line which was a big question mark to me I was pretty impressed because they had to play a lot of minutes mm -hmm. and a lot of snaps but they kept coming out there it seemed like they're because of the maybe shortage of depth it seems like they're in pretty good shape right now oh they're all in a phenomenal shape yeah. I mean I got a chance to chat again with Ty Robinson who showed really well Nash Hutchman I thought played really well I hope he didn't get dinged up too bad right that's the one thing you never want to see in a spring game but the kid that I kept popping off the screen it was feisty I think is his last name feisty but 96 didn't see a lot of him last year, but mm -hmm. he kept showing up a little bit during the spring game. And you talk about a guy that needs to fill shoes for Ben Stilley leaving or, and even a DeAndre Thomas, a Damian Daniels, right? Like there's going to be a committee trying to fill those shoes. But if a guy can kind of step up and I actually was chatting with Jason Peters a little bit during the game about him. And he was like, this kid's going to, he's got all the tools. He's just got to put it all together. And that's what you love to see in spring, because if they can do that in spring, it really primes them to take a huge jump during fall camp to become a contributor. Any of the defensive backs maybe separate themselves for you? Maybe you could see getting the locking up the starting spot yet? Not yet. You know, I think Braxton Clark obviously has the nod on it. Um, but Tommy Hill, man, he's, he's a really good player. His movement skills are really good. The other kid that really stood out was Buford. I think Buford was all over the field. Um, not, he didn't make a ton of tackles, but I thought, like, watching his force leverage, watching how he backpedaled and how he moved his hips and 
I, I watched him probably about 10 consistent snaps to really kind of get a good read on him. And I think that he can really fit that position of that free safety down in the box type of role that we're going to need to have when you're playing Big Ten teams that want to run the football. you got to have a safety that can go stick their nose in there. I don't think Miles Farmer's necessarily really that guy, but I think Buford is that more physical get down in the box and run fit with a lot of things. And... Um... Isaac Gifford was a name we kept hearing a bunch on Saturday as well from, from players, from JoJo, from Emmy. You talked to his brother. I mean, that's a name that kept coming up again. Yeah, I mean, he had a small sample size last year, and he went out there and he performed well. He's a guy I think they're probably, again, we talk about grooming guys into being impact players. He's a guy that came in, not a very highly recruited kid, but knew his work ethic. And I think they see a lot of similarities in his games to a young JoJo. Right, and so again, trying to groom him into that position, and that's a that's another hybrid linebacker nickel, right? You want to play a bigger guy in that role sometimes when you're playing against the Wisconsin's and the Michigans and the Ohio States. They're going to run the rock, but you also have to have a guy that if they go 11 personnel, and they're going to spread it out and throw those bubble screens or those middle screens or those outside receiver screens that can win a one-on-one -on -one matchup with a, a wide receiver that's trying to block him and go make a tackle, right? So there's a lot of things and a lot of good things there that you see. From Isaac Gifford. Noah Pola Gates was another guy, too, that went through. Oh, hey, hi, we, buddy. We have a special guest. I know, yeah. yeah let's show the podcast viewers here. We've, we've talked about him here. Hey, Oliver, can you say Go Huskers? Go Huskers. One oh, more time. That's go awesome. Huskers. All right, let's get you set back up here. <laughs> there you go. We're watching, a little, we're watching a little trash truck. All right, there you go, buddy. Well, we've talked about him enough. It's about time he made an appearance. I know. You know? He's here. I mean, I, I talked to Scott Frost. He's already committed for the class of 2038, <laughs> I believe it is. So, got our first commit, Scott. We're ready to go. That's awesome. Um, and you flipped my camera. There we go. Um, all right, final takeaways, I mean, from... Saturday, a lot of former players that were in attendance, which is cool to see. You mentioned the um, uh, just overall attendance of the crowd. I, I know Casey Thompson's family, and they mentioned that, about how cool it was to see so many fans for a spring game. So you had a bunch of recruits in. That was big for them to see as well. Yeah, and it's not just big for football. It's big for all sports, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you can bring a lot of recruits into a spring game across all the sports in Nebraska and be like, this is what the fan base is. It's not just Husker football. Like, the Husker Nation fan base runs far and wide for all their sports and all athletics. And this is such a small sample size. So that's really good for the entire university as a whole. But especially, I mean, we had more five-star recruits here for a spring game than we had most of last year, right? We're starting to see that. And a lot of that has to do with NIL. But guess what? NIL can help on-field performance. So... I think that was a huge piece of it all. I think there's still a lot of people that wanted to see more from this offense, but not surprising. Coach Whipple and Coach Frost kept it pretty close to the vest. I think they ran a total of like five different plays of run plays. So yeah. very vanilla, no shifts, no motions. Like that is not the offense we're going to see against Northwestern Ireland. I can promise you all of you that it will be much different much more complex but for a spring game it's exactly what needed to happen and for an offense like that it's not you know i mean you're going to catch some people by surprise in the first game but the second game the third game it's going to be hard there's going to be so many different wrinkles that coach football coach frost are going to be able to do that there's a team's going to have a hard time game planning it for several games into the season absolutely and you got to remember these guys haven't even installed the wrinkles yet probably right yeah. they spent this spring just installing your base offense it takes a full spring just to install your base runs your base pass plays things that you're just going to run once you get into fall camp and you start closing the playbook down I mean once you get into spring the whole playbook's open as you go through fall camp you start refining your playbook and really making it a lot smaller to just things you do well and then you have the wrinkles on the side but they're still in the very broad game plan out there and they'll start slowly refining that they'll do a lot of self-scout between now and and when training camp starts to see things we really want to work on in training camp, things we want to add in training camp, so that this offense just continues to keep developing to be better and better and better. I, I should have mentioned earlier, because Scott Frost mentioned this to you in his interview after the game about, and he's mentioned this several times, the offensive line, how impressed mm. he's been with uh, Donovan Rayola and what he's brought to the offensive line. What did you think of that one? Again, that was something you heard over and over again throughout the spring. Yeah, I think the second half, you got to see a lot more firing off the ball and moving double teams, right? I think so many times a lineman might have even been blocked up with the linebacker in that first half and they tagged off and called him down, right? But I saw really good double teams. I saw really good holes. I think they were running off the football a whole lot better. And again, I got to see guys like Kevin Williams who I haven't got to really see. Hexen looked pretty solid at center, right? And you lose Ethan Piper who wasn't playing, who's another guy. So, I mean, he missing a lot of key pieces on that offensive line, but I think he's done a really nice job with the young guys especially getting them up to speed and getting up the run. And every alignment I talked to, I talked to Nuri, I talked to Turner, talked to Teddy, they all love Coach Rayola. They love what he brings to that room. 
They love what he's done with that room. And they're still just getting to know him too, right? So that's just going to be a relationship that continues to go and develop as well. How about uh, Dominic Rayola on the sideline wearing a run the dang ball hat? Run the damn ball, Jessica. <laughs> run the damn ball. That's what it is. And I love every second of it, right? I mean, that guy, you talk about one an all-time great. He's an all-time great. Played yeah. forever in the league. Will always be welcome back here. Seeing his son get back here too, that's an awesome piece. Huge quarterback recruit. Not sure we're going to be in the running to get him. I mean, he's an Alabama type kid, but I mean, you never know, right? The, the Husker connection goes deep in that family. And so you never know. He might have been here and be like, man, dad, this is where I belong. If you're watching it, this is where you belong. <laughs> but, you know, I think that having guys like that come back just show what this program is and show how important this program means to so many people. What's next for these guys now? As spring chapters close, what do you do now? Yeah, so you get about three weeks in the weight room to really get after it again because now there's no more practices, but a lot of it's get healthy. Um, you got nicks and bruises. No one's coming out of spring ball feeling 100%. You got to kind of use these next three weeks to really work on your strength. You don't really have to condition as much. Really focus your time in the weight room. Get some time off in May. Go home. Don't get out of shape. Don't come back overweight. How many times guys go home and that happens? But really come back ready to go refreshed, right? That's kind of your last deep breath as you head into the summer program starting, I think, the first week in June. I mean, you go from June until hopefully all the way until January, right? The bowl game this year. That's got to happen. And so kind of refresh, reset your mind, reset your body, and come back ready to go in June, ready to rock and roll. How important is the summer and this, this time now? So important. The summer conditioning program, the strength and conditioning program is so important. You are in school, which is good. Get some credits out of the way. Maybe I always like taking my hardest classes in the summer. So you get six, eight-week programs. You can just every day show up and just knock it out. So really get some school done. But a lot of it's just getting your body ready to go, right? What are some things you did in spring ball that didn't go so well for you. Hey, man, I didn't get my lower body strong. I wasn't able to move these guys. Or, hey, I need to work on my hip mobility or whatever it is. And focusing on that in the summer because you've got three months now to really focus and fix those things before you get into football again where it sometimes turns into survival mode just trying to stay past ready to go. All right, up next, draft time. And yes. your first draft going at it in this role as an agent. How excited are you? Oh, I can't wait. I mean, this is the week for me that I get to start calling NFL teams, start talking about my guys and all the pro days are done now so everyone's back in house all the scouts are back and start talking about guys like Austin Allen and uh, a couple other I have four alignment in this class and so just start trying to get those guys ready to go and I do film session breakdowns with them every week so we're watching NFL tape we're watching protections and 12 personnel 11 personnel and just getting real football-y with these guys now that pro day is done turn them back into football players Overall, I mean, we you've said Cam Jurgens before, but and we're gonna have a hopefully a scoop after mm -hmm. the the draft to break all of that down and where these guys went and landed and all of that. But you still standing by? You think Cam Jurgens is gonna be the first Husker call? I do. I, <clears throat> I I go back and forth with him or Cam Taylor. You know, I think mm -hmm. Cam Taylor is a guy that helped himself so much at the combine running four three eight. And what really helps him is he's one of the bigger corners in this draft. A lot of corners in this year's draft are skinnier, smaller corners. Cam is a big corner. Yeah, he is big and he will he will run up and hit you right and then you can run four three eight that's a really good combination and a lot of teams love that about him so I'll be curious there might be a team that might reach on him in the second and go for him which I could absolutely see but I think Cam I think Cam Jurgens and Cam Taylor Britt are late day two guys but absolutely early right off the board day three guys huge to get those guys names called for recruiting purposes and you talk about getting guys in and yep. seeing what how you develop these guys moving forward I mean I think all four of the guys that went to the combine will get drafted you know I think Jojo I think Cam Taylor Britt Cam Jurgens, and Austin Allen all have a really good chance to have their names called in the NFL draft this year which you nailed it when you can point to hey we had four guys go in the draft that year it, it helps circle all the way back to high school kids coming here wanting to go to the NFL it's Everyone wants to say, hey, we develop NFL talent here. That's a huge piece of recruiting. Four or five is a great number for a program year in and year out. Absolutely. If you can get four or five guys drafted year in and year out, you should win a lot more games than three. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll uh, look forward to having you back after the draft, and we'll break all of that down where all the guys wound up, all of that good stuff. So uh, there you go. Spring football uh, in the Close it. In the rearview mirror. It. That's crazy. All right. For Jeremiah Searles, I'm Jessica Cootie. Thanks for listening. Go Big Red. Got it this time. <laughs>